Hey, hey, welcome everyone who's joining live and for the recording of the Q&A. So this is a Q&A for the cleanse and group that we're doing. If you're not aware of it, for those who are on Facebook Live, um, we do this every six months, but every quarter we have a cleanse. So you're welcome to join. But it's also a great time to have your questions answered about essential oils, um, different products, and then also um, health coaching. So if you, I'm a certified health coach and Blue Diamond Wellness Advocate, so have experience with um, health and nutrition as well as essential oils and then a certified strengths coach. So I know a lot of you took the strengths assessment and so if you have questions about that and want how does this apply to health, we can do that as well. So the agenda that we're going to follow today is I want to first just talk about nine different pitfalls that often occur when we're trying to create change or have a success in something. So I just want to talk about that and then we're going to open it up for you to share your wins. So what's one thing that's going well with you with the oils or the cleanse or you know things that you're working on want to hear about that and then we'll go ahead and jump on for any live questions that there are or any Facebook questions that we have and then I have some that submitted questions um, in the Google form so then we'll go over those okay so let me share my screen for those who are here Trying to see which one it is here. You know when you have too many screens open? Such a bad thing. Ta-da, okay. So if you're able to see that, um, pitfalls. The, you know in January, I don't know if you've done this, but I've done this, where in January you go to the gym or you sign up, you get excited about something. It could be you're excited about this cleanse. And so you sign up, you get excited, but then oftentimes what happens is a couple weeks later, <laughs> the gym's pretty empty. Like the people who are excited about it aren't so excited about it. And so I wanna talk about some of the pitfalls that often happen with us when we get excited about something, creating some kind of change or striving for some kind of goal. And some of the things we can do to manage those, those pitfalls. So the first one is oftentimes we get paralyzed by fear. Um, this can be fear of failure. Um, maybe you've tried so many times with something. A lot of times that's with weight management, right? That we try different diets or different exercises and we just don't get the results. We have a fear of failure or a fear that um, you just won't get the results that we thought we would after putting in the effort. And there's just a lot of reasons why we might have some fear. Fear we don't understand, fear, I don't know, you fill in the blank. So that's one of the pitfalls that often shows up. The second one, and this is one that I often fall in, into, is that we start learning without action. One of my strengths is learner, so I love to learn. Just the process of learning is super exciting for me. But without action, that can often lead to overwhelm. And so the biggest danger really of, of if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, especially in this cleanse, because there is a lot of information. So you could just be soaking up the information. You will experience overwhelm if you don't start taking action. So, and it doesn't have to be big action. You're going to learn a lot of, about a lot of different things, but it's just the small actions that will take you out of that overwhelm. So oftentimes if my house is like a mess, um, I have tons of laundry because we have six kids and they make messes and we've tried to train them to clean up after themselves, but they're somewhat like dogs. I think that they don't often do that. Right. And so we're always reminding what reminding anyway. So I love clean spaces. And so I sometimes will feel overwhelmed. But what I found is that when I just take a small action, like I'm just going to put in a load of laundry or I'm just going to clean off this counter, it starts to reduce the overwhelm because I've gone into action. So that's something to remember. If you're ever feeling overwhelmed, it's probably because you're not taking action and just finding a small action, small thing that you can do to move forward will help you. Um, the third one is head trash, is what I call it. It's like that little devil talking, speaking into your ear, like you're not good enough, you can't do this, you're gonna fail, this is why this isn't gonna work. We have that just going on in our head. And so the Facebook group that we have for the cleanse or for the essential oils is, is really helpful um, because it can help with better information going into your head. Yes, you can do this. When you're coming on this live and you're hearing other people's wins and you're sharing your wins, that it can help to change that head trash that's going on. But being aware that oftentimes that's why we're not successful is just because of what's going on in our head. 
The next one is being comfortable with a good life. Bless you. Um, <laughs> but sometimes life isn't that bad for us, right? Like our health is, is pretty good. I'm fine. I have this or that, you know, I might have some little issues here and there. And so oftentimes we are just comfortable. And so we don't have that push to, or that drive to move forward, to make progress instead of just having like an average, okay life, like really excellent, awesome life. Like we're thriving in things and we're helping others to thrive. And so that can be a real danger. Uh, sometimes when we, and I think of this, especially monetarily, when we are struggling, like you're at your wits end and you have to make your rent or your mortgage payment. You know, if you've ever been in that struggle, that often leads us to action. But sometimes we get to a place where we're feeling pretty comfortable with our health. And if we don't make changes now when we're feeling good, then oftentimes what it looks like when we're 60, 70, 80 doesn't look so good. Um, even though right now we might feel well. So looking at your lifestyle habits and the things that you might consider changing um, would be good to do that. Um, desperation and self-interest. Oftentimes we don't make needed changes because we're just thinking of ourselves. Um, and this brings to mind, my father-in-law has cancer and he's going through a lot of awful things right now. For those of you who have had cancer or have dealt, you know, had family members who've had it, you know, it's just not a pretty thing. Um, why I bring that up is that I can see like my future through him. Like I can see the possibilities of, and I'm not saying that he didn't take care of himself, but I'm saying that there are lifestyle choices that we make now that will impact not only us, but it'll affect our family members. That if we are taking care of ourselves, so we have energy, that have mental clarity, that we're growing and progressing, we're feeling fulfilled, that it positively impacts those around us. So not just thinking about ourselves, but also thinking about how our health, um, our emotional health, physical health, that they impact other people as well. That that can help drive success, can help us to stick to things that we want to accomplish. Um, also being too concerned with the opinions of others, oftentimes, especially I found with people using essential oils, there might be a spouse, they like, they're a hindrance to your progress sometimes, like they're buying the cupcakes and the whatever and bringing them home when they know that you're trying to make some some changes, but also they might have some opinions about some of the things you're doing. And so sometimes we just need to shut out those, those opinions or other concerns. And I like this about the lion doesn't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. Right. So whoever you are and who you're trying to become, try to focus on that, not trying to cause conflict or anything. But sometimes you have to just close your ears to some of those other things that are going on. And then this one is huge. I'm being obsessed with the results instead of activity. The we can never guarantee results on anything that we do that. Um, for instance, we might start a, we're trying to exercise. I know there's many of you in the cleanse that are trying to implement some exercise and you can't guarantee like if you exercise th three days a week, 30 minutes a week, that you're going to lose weight. If that's one of the results that you were trying to get, you can't guarantee that because there's so many factors that go into it. But if you're focusing on the activity of, I know that exercise is good and healthy for me. It's going to make me stronger. It's going to help me to have more energy. It's going to help me live a longer life. Like that's all, you know, the statistics say that exercise, our bodies are meant to move. That are focused on the activity more than the result, then you're not so concerned if like in a week you didn't lose those 10 pounds. But you know you've created the habit or you're doing the activity that will lead you in that direction. And you might have to make some tweaks to your exercise or your nutrition, but if you're starting those habits, that they will lead you in the right direction. Um, I think it was second to last one, impatience and short-term th thinking. Oftentimes, we're not having a, a long-term thinking about this. Like, where do I want to be when I'm 90? I want to live to 100. Whatever it is, what are the habits that I'm needing to implement now and not be so short-term about this? I want to be wearing that bathing suit in, in summer or I want to fit into those pants by XYZ time. And it's not, it's okay to set those goals like this is what I'm aiming for. But um, if we have impatience, then oftentimes that's where we get the yo-yo dieting or we try this and we try that and then we try that and then we don't ever keep some of the great habits that we've established from maybe those short-term um, challenges that we've done. Um, sometimes there's a lack of belief in our capability, lack of belief in, it can be the product. So sometimes we don't try things uh, or stick with them because we have a lack of belief. That can be very helpful. If you read through the cleanse, um, 
like the experiences that people have had, read through those. Those can help build your belief and stick to some of these things that you might not see the results immediately, right? From, from doing a cleanse, but stick with it because you'll start seeing those things. And then the last one is a vision. Pain pushes you until the vision pulls you. Oftentimes we get started in something because we have a pain, but what really keeps us going is the vision of where we want to be. So if that's a vision of a healthy, fulfilled life where we have great relationships, where we have meaningful work within our lives, where we're, we have energy and physically fit and we're, we feel confident in the things that we're eating. If that's your vision, that will pull you forward, even though it might be one little pain like, I've gained 10 pounds, right? That might get you started, but what holds you there, pulls you, okay. and you going is that bigger vision. So I just wanted to share those um, nine pitfalls with you. And most of the people who are on this don't need this. <laughs> it's the people that don't watch this are, are generally the people that need that, right? Okay. So we're going to jump in live. We have a few more people on um, now. Let me stop sharing my screen. And I just want to get from you. I just want one win. Like what's one thing that's gone well for you with the cleanse so far? It could be something that you've done, something that you it can be a goal, whatever. So um, I'm going to start and then we'll just ask everybody to share. Mine is that I, my goal has been to get back into the habit of um, regular exercise. So I exercise, I run, we're training for a marathon and I've had a, uh, a pole tendon in my leg, which has been kind of painful. And so I've been going to physical therapy and it's feeling a lot better. And so now my biggest intention for the next 30 days is just to get back into that regular um, routine of running and being on my schedule for being able to do this marathon June 1st. Okay. So that's mine. And so I have been really good this week. <laughs> so I get up at five 30 in the morning. So that means I have to go to bed by 10 to get for me to feel good. So that's a huge win for me so far. Um, who would like to go next? I'll go before I decide to sneeze again. Um, so I've done the cleanse a few times and my husband has done it mm, about 60%. So my win would be this week. He really committed to actually doing all the exactly when you wake up, breakfast, lunch, dinner, nighttime, everything where before he would be like, eh, I'll just, yeah, I'll do it here and there. And he hasn't really committed. Um, and so it's also helped my commitment level as well and helped just look at small little things. Um, I decided I was going to add one new thing to the cleanse. And so I've been doing tongue scraping. So that's my win. Um, and then I just also really having my husband to be a hundred percent on board. And honestly, I've, I've been doing the cleanse every four to five months for the last five years. And he's done it with me half-heartedly that long. It's taken until this time around for him to be like, okay, I'm all in. That's all. Awesome. Stick it on the fridge and I'll do it. So, um, I guess that's just like, have faith that someone else will decide they want to do it with you too. <laughs> Ooh, and your spouse. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, Colleen, are you available? I am. I'm sitting right here trying to figure out how to, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Then I'm sharing. Oh, can you see me? I don't yeah, see me. No, I don't see you, but I see you shared your screen. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I have just, I'm new to the doTERRA. I've done some oils in the past, but not this. And the program I started Monday, I feel pretty decent with it, but I, I can't tell if it's really working anything for me yet. What I did was though, started that vitality pack a month ago. So I'm on my second month of that. And I think I see a difference in myself. My goal is similar to yours, Stacy. I want to, I've always exercised and I like to exercise because I know that that's good for me. I know I feel better and I'm diabetic and I know my sugar counts go, you know, more under control, which is, you know, pretty good. And I want to get rid of some weight I gained since I moved to this area. Plus, I think the um, vitality pack, is that what it's called, a vitality pack? Yeah. Lifelong okay. vitality. Yep. Okay. That, that has helped me to feel better consistently because I have a, a health issue that really keeps me down. And this, uh, is, seems to be getting into the background now with, and I'm pretty sure I can attribute it to this vitality path. 
so that now that I want to exercise every day, I don't sit there and I feel like, oh, this hurts too much for me to get up and move. I can't do it today. And I've been able to, you know, keep up with some type of exercise. Either I'm walking or I'm doing my exercise bike or I'm dancing in the living room. I'm doing anything that I can to keep moving and I don't feel sluggish and full of pain. I have some pain, but it's not so much that it keeps me from moving. That's awesome. That's huge. Matt. That's one of the three things. There's three major things that most people experience with a lifelong vitality. That's more energy, less pain, and like better mental clarity or mood. And so that's awesome to be able to see that. And it's, that's huge for health, right? That is, that is for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Audrey, you want to share? Aubrey. There you go. Aubrey, do you want to share? Um, for me, it's been drinking water, getting the water in every day. Um, if we leave the house and we run errands or if we're just away from the home, it's harder to drink water because you're, you know, not in your home routine. So I've been very conscious about getting the water in and I'm seeing a huge difference. Um, I, I really like the water app that has really made it for me because I make sure, you know, put water in my bag so that I have it to take with me. Um, with the water app going off, even if you're out running errands and it goes off, it's like, hey, gotta drink the water. So um, I really like that um, little app and I think that's been a huge help. Uh, thank you for sharing that because that was what somebody's question. They said that they were able to drink they get about three three of their water bottles in, but their goal was four. And so maybe that's one of the recommendations, get the app just to remind you to drink maybe more frequently. Um, and it's a free app, right? And it's called Water App? Yeah. Yeah, it's a free app. And all I did was go, because I have Google um, Play Store. So I just went to that and typed in um, water oh. reminder <laughs> okay. or drink reminder. Yeah. And there were so many apps that came up that were free. And I scrolled down and I found one called Plant Nanny. And when I read it, it was, you have to grow your plant. And so the reminder goes, hey, I'm a thirsty plant. I need to drink. And you would have to water the plant. So I promised myself, okay, you can't just go on there and water the plant unless you drink. Um, because that would be, you know, if you didn't the purpose of this reminder. Um, and I actually did that for all of last year. And at the end of the year, you can look and see how much water. That's you actually really cool. drink. And I was like, wow, I wonder, I wonder if that's close to what it should be. And at the start of this cleanse, that's what I noticed is even though I was trying to reach, there was several weeks in that year because it monitors it for you that I didn't hit my even two glasses of water. And that's, pretty sad. Even though I was keeping my plant alive, I wasn't necessarily getting the water I needed. So this year I downloaded one that was a fish tank, just for some variety and to start over fresh. And um, already I'm like, okay, I'm going to make sure <laughs> that I water. water. Yeah, it was, it's been working wonderfully. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So the two things would be one, making sure you have water available, you're taking it with you, and then you have the app with reminder. And yeah, and the thing is, is the app, with the app reminder going off, it's reminding you to be conscious of your water. So then it reminded me like, okay, I'm at home, I don't have my water. Right. Or like, I know I'm going to go out, so this reminder just went off, you better go put a bottle of water in your purse so that you have it. It's like, throughout the day, it's constantly reminding you to consider what your water situation is like. So I'm noticing that I'm like actively carrying cups around the house or that I'm actively carrying the water with me yep. just because it's a consistent reminder throughout the day. That's awesome. So um, one reminder with people that the oils actually work better if you're hydrated. So if you aren't, so when we're talking about drinking water, not only are we talking about your health in the sense like we should be hydrated, but also the products that you're taking through the cleanse, whether you're drinking lemon, um, whether you're taking the lifelong vitality, with the oils that are in there, oils work better. You'll get better um, results 
if you're hydrated. And so just be mindful of that. Also, you know, we often work with some with people. Um, I have over 100,000 people on our team. And there are some people like, that doesn't work for me. And then once we start digging deeper into, like their nutrition is horrible, but especially their water consumption is horrible. And as soon as they start uptaking more water, the oils work better for them. They start getting better results. So just be mindful of that. Um, okay, Haley, do you want to share a win? Or will you? <laughs> Uh, uh, don't be shy or nervous, we're all be. Sorry, I'm trying to, I don't know, can you guys hear me? We can hear you, yeah. Okay, um, so I have just been trying to there, eat healthier, <laughs> sorry, I just got out of the shower, um, eat healthier, um, drink more water. I need to do better at that. But, um, like I tried that tuna recipe you guys mentioned, that is fantastic. <laughs> it was so good. Um, so I've been trying to do that and I've also been working out every day this week. So yay for you. Those are huge wins. Good job. <laughs> All right, Rebecca, do you want to share or will you share? What's one of your wins? I don't know. Sometimes people are driving or whatever and can't, but if you're available, Rebecca's in the chat. Sweet. Let's pull that up. Other reminders, I don't have a mic. Okay, no problem. You're welcome to post that in the chat if you're able to type, you're not driving. Um, and so we're going to thank you for sharing those wins. And I hope for those who are watching the recording that you'll think about what's at least one win that I've had so far. Now, I just want to go, do any of you who are on live have any questions that you'd like answered? Um, there's quite a few on here who have experience with oils that, and these products that can help with that um, or nutrition, diet strengths. So I just want to give you a minute for those who are on live and then I'm going to jump to the ones that were um, submitted. I, I do have a question. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, okay, good. Because I can't see me. Sometime I'll figure that out. But <laughs> <laughs> there's a little thing on your camera that should look like a, a camera. Oh, I've got it covered up. Never mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello. hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm, that's right. You know, I had that scare about that stuff. People looking into your house while you're, you know, whatever. So I covered it up. Hello. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I just wondered since I'm diabetic, do you have a, a regime of some kind that will be helpful with that? Some kind of oil? Okay. Yes. In fact, I, I will post that mm -hmm. where I post this recording because there are uh -huh. probably others that want to see it. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. I'll go ahead and post that. That's good to know. You know I should probably put that back on. No. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> usually, generally what happens when people come on the first time, like, I have to worry about yourself. Oh, holy no, cow, you know, who is that? Don't. Like we love seeing like real life, right? Real okay. people, real humans. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question, or maybe this is another secondary concern. When you start getting into taking supplementation like Lifelong Vitality and Terrazyme, for many of us, we may not be processing or digesting our foods correctly, and these products help start things to get moving. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe just a tidbit of what is beneficial, what is okay, maybe some concerns um, that you can, because for some of us, taking this level of supplementation throughout the day is could be up to six times more than we've ever had. Mm -hmm. And there's some definite changes that can happen in those first couple of days. Um, for my husband specifically, he struggles with taking two uh, pills of the lifelong vitality at one time, whether he's eating food or whether it's not he just that's too much at one given time. So for him, he has to do one pill first thing in the morning, and then when he eats, breakfast, and then with lunch, and then with dinner. So he's still getting the nutrients, but it has to be spread out a little further. I, because I have ulcerative colitis, have to do the same with my terazine. I cannot take more than one at one time. Um, and so I have to spread it out more frequently throughout the day. So these are just things that maybe are slightly altering to the traditional routine. Um, I guess my question is, when should people notice whether or not they need to make those adjustments? 
Yeah, so that's this kind of brings up that issue of bioindividuality, right? If you watch the Nutrition 101, it talks about how everybody's different. And that's why we wanted people watching that because not just with our food, but also with our supplements, with the oils, that what works for you might not work for someone else. Um, so with those, with the lifelong vitality, you should experience within a few days or so, like more energy, right? And people, if you are starting to experience any kind of digestive issues, that might just be a quick sign to you that, you know, you might want to cut back a little bit because this cleanse isn't supposed to be something that like I have to be sitting next to the bathroom, right? That's not what type of cleanse. This should be a very gentle helping to cleanse your cleansing organs so that it's kind of like those little filters that we have to get rid of toxins to eliminate them properly. Um, some of the products will be helping to clean those and clear those so that we can eliminate properly. So if you're experiencing any kind of digestive issues, diarrhea, constipation, that kind of thing, you might want to cut back, like just like what he's done where maybe he's just taking them less frequently, or if there's people who will cut that in half, right? And will only do half the supplements, one in the morning, one in, in the evening with their meal and paying attention if you're taking them with meals. Um, and so know that you can make those adjustments. There's not like a, we're giving you just kind of a, it's like when you do a diet, people generally do better by having a checklist of like, here's the structure, but also knowing you need to make personal adjustments and that's okay, right? And so, yeah, those would be some kind of signs. If you're having some digestive issues and you can't help resolve those by maybe tasting some digestin, right? Because you can rub the digestin on your belly or you can take the capsule to help support with that. Um, and knowing that if this is your first time, it's okay to cut it back. And then the next time thinking, okay, I'm going to try a little bit more as your system is becoming more used to the nutrients and the supplements that they're getting, um, that that's why we're doing this regularly to help people just keep making those gradual progressions and changes. Did you have anything to add to that, Elise? Or Okay. I just know a lot of people asked me in the very beginning of this plan, even though they were reading the information, is this going to be an issue for me at work? Is this going <laughs> yeah, So to that's probably the biggest thing. When I travel. Yeah. Yeah. And we should have maybe made that more clear. This is a simple, gentle cleanse. If you're experiencing something where it's not gentle, then that's either cut back or try some digestion to help with that. Um, and you'll have occasionally, you know, people who have health concerns, like if you have ulcer ulcerative colitis, whatever, right? How do you say that? Um, like know, you have to the watch part. things, right? You're going to have to do things a little bit different because of that. If there's somebody that has diabetes that you might have to watch that and, and be aware um, that you might have to make some changes that other people don't have to worry about. Mm -hmm. So just know that that bio individuality is really important. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, is there any other questions? Okay, we had some fun ones, and I, I learned a lot as I was just kind of researching these. So Brandy had asked, um, hi Leona, hi Stephanie. Oh, let me answer this if we're here. If I skip breakfast dose, can I double it um, for lunch or no? Actually, yes, you can. You could take them all at once if you want. I, I, people seem to do better if you break them up and often do better if you're taking them with meals. And your body knows how to take those, store those, use those, right? but splitting them up, that's just what we recommend. But I always say, if you're not gonna remember to take them, like you forgot, it's okay to take, if you didn't do your breakfast, you could do lunch and dinner. Some people don't like to do dinner because they might get a little boost of energy and don't sleep as well. I sleep great, so I don't have to worry about it, right? And so that's where you're, you're kind of playing with this. You're becoming more self-aware of yourself, um, how these things are impacting you, and you can make your little bit of adjustments. If you have questions, you know, go ahead and ask us. Um, Brandy had asked a question. She did, she left home. She's traveling before she got her kid to have the GX assist. And so she's going to be making her own, which GX assist comes with a lemon, um, melaleuca, thyme, oregano, and peppermint. So those are the five oils in the GX assist. We're not to that part yet. Um, and then it also has caprylic acid. And this is, we're going to get to the phase where we're doing kind of like a gastrointestinal cleanse. That's what the GX assist is for. And especially anybody that has, if you're doing the spit test with, for the candida, um, and you feel like you have some issues with candida, this is really helpful for getting rid of that and managing it a lot better. If you're somebody that's struggling with sugar cravings, that might be 
a clue to you that this might be something you're struggling with. So the GX Assessed helps to cleanse. So she wanted to know if she could make her own capsules. And yes, you can. That's how I had started it years ago because I knew I had issues with Candida and they didn't have the GX. No, they had GX Assist, but I was like, I'm just going to be cheap and I'm going to make it myself, right? Because I have the oils. So <laughs> I just got my capsules and I put drops in there. <clears throat> you would do one to two drops of each of those in the capsule. And then you can buy caprylic acid um, capsules separately. Um, just make sure you're getting a high quality if you're wanting to do that. Or the other thing is what caprylic acid is, is it's one of the three essential fatty acids that's found in coconut oil. Um, and this fatty acid, what it is antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. And so that's why it's been added to the GX Assist because it can help do that cleansing of those organs. So if you're struggling with an overgrowth growth of yeast, which is that candida, that it can help support that. What it also helps with is skin. So if you're having issues with um, your skin filtering organ, that it can help with acne, it can help with eczema, it can help with psoriasis. So that GX is just gonna be super powerful for that. Um, but knowing it, like part of that's because of that caprylic acid that comes from coconut oil. Um, also it helps with digestive disorders. So if you have yeast infections, if you have IBS, Crohn's, or ulcerative colitis, that GX Assist can be very helpful for that. Um, it's also good for cholesterol, for high cholesterol, that this fatty acid helps to uh, lower um, the bad cholesterol in your body. Um, and why it does is it helps with inflammation. So anything, any kind of inflammatory type of disease or problem that we have, that it helps to reduce inflammation. Um, and then the fourth thing that it helps is it helps to lower antibiotic resistance. So if you're someone, there's people like, I really try to stay away from antibiotics because oftentimes when we take antibiotics, it will kill our good bacteria within our gut. It, it will just kill everything. And then you create this imbalance within your gut. And that's often when you'll have an overgrowth of bad bacteria or yeast. That's where the candida comes from. And so it just, then it perpetuates a lot of different issues. People are having these sugar cravings. They're eating more sugar. They're feeding that within their gut. And then it starts affecting their mental health. You have more neurotransmitters in your gut than you have in your brain. And so what goes on in your gut totally impacts your, your mood and your emotions. And so then you get in this cycle, right? Um, and so knowing that this is a simple way to help reduce that inflammation within your gut, help to get rid of bacteria, viruses, the overgrowth of yeast, and then you have the side effects of supporting your skin, your digestive system, your cholesterol, um, and helping support antibiotic resistance. So for brandy, if you don't have caprylic acid, you're not able to get that, that you can use coconut oil. And um, this is really great to put in your smoothies. You can just take a scoop, put it in a smoothie and blend it up. If you're okay with the taste, like my daughter, she takes a spoonful in the morning. Um, and it has been super powerful for her skin. She's 15, um, very helpful for her skin and knowing that that's in there. So that's kind of a long answer about how many drops do you put in <laughs> GX Assist. Um, I like to do the coconut oil buy a really good quality coconut oil and like make your morning tea or, or something warm and then just put that right in there and stir it really good because it makes it frothy and creamy and you don't have to add dairies yeah. to anything. So that for me, trying to come off the caffeine because that just wasn't helpful with digestive issues, adding that coconut oil straight to my morning teas, that that was a game changer for me. So that's yeah. another way you could probably add it too. And it is just the most beautiful flavor in your drinks. And it, what it, I, I want to bring up with that and why, you know, some people are thinking you're putting oil in your drink, right? Um, if you grew up or were around like in the eighties, like low fat was the fad, right? They taught us that if you eat low fat, you'll lose fat. But we've since found that's not true, that there are different types of fat. Um, and and fats are essential for our diet. Like we need to have fats, we need proteins, we need carbohydrates, right? Plus then the vitamins and minerals and all that. So there are different types of fat. There are fats that cause inflammation and then there's fats that, cause, that reduce inflammation. And in the United States, especially, we are usually one to 20 on the ratio of the, the fats that cause inflammation. Like we're consuming like 20 to one, those that reduce. So I just wanted to share with you and somebody else had asked about um, GERD that had issues with that. So I want to bring this up as well, that the 
by eating good fat helps you lose weight. By eating bad fat, it will help you to gain weight or keep weight on because those fats cause inflammation. So I want to tell you what some of those good fat, or well, the bad fats that we were taught, these were great, you know? And I also teach people to stay away from the low fat products because they replace the, the fat with sugar. And so usually the sugar content will go up in those products. Um, and so be aware, like it's, if you're having sour cream, just eat the sour cream, right? The low fat sour cream can be more harmful for you as far as weight gain um, and inflammation than eating a little bit of the full fat, okay? I noticed so, that when being diabetic, I noticed that when I'm looking for, you know, low fat products at the same time, I'm thinking, well, the, the sugar's going up. It's in skim milk, it's the same thing. Yeah. There's more sugar in skim milk than there is in the regular milk. It's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'm kind of justified now. <laughs> I know. And, and usually when you eat the full fat, you eat less of it because it is more savory, right? Um, Thank you. <laughs> I give you permission. So the things you want to stay away from are your vegetable oils. So in, back in the 80s, hot, vegetable oils were healthy. You know, eat margarine instead of butter. That's just it's been shown scientifically that it's not true. You will, you will gain weight by eating these things. So the vegetable oils, the margarine, the soybean oil, the corn oil, safflower saf oil, and the canola oil. Um, if you're able to totally eliminate those and start using these other oils, which I'll give you some other options, that these are healthier anti-inflammatory type oils that will support your health goals, not just with weight, but just long-term health goals. Um, so those that you can add to, and you'll, you can Google, like, go see how they make some of these vegetable oils, the canola oil, the safflower oil. So see what they do for these things to make them edible. It's disgusting. So the things that you can replace that with, extra virgin olive oil, fa fabulous, anti-inflammatory, great for your skin, great for your gut health, um, coconut oil, um, grass-fed meat, uh, nuts. So grass-fed, so there's a difference between just those that are fed corn diets, that they produce higher saturated fats than grass-fed. And so just, and you can just go this, start meat. Meat, yeah, okay. because you're getting the fats. We're just talking about fats. Okay. So if you're going to be eating, you know, meat, you'll get some of your fat source through the meat. If you can choose grass, which it is more expensive, but you usually eat less of it. Um, and so just starting to be aware of that. Google it. Start learning about these things. Um, nuts are great for you. And peanuts are not a nut. It's a legume. So that one doesn't go in that category. Um, but other nuts, they're a great source of, of healthy fats, anti-inflammatory. also helps you to eat less because you're getting the protein as well. Um, fatty fish like wild salmon are a great source. And if you're gonna eat butter, grass-fed butter is better butter, but butter is better than margarine. So just know that, you know, that's a better option. Even even lard is better than like your oils. It's and especially if you can get it, you know, from clean animal, you know, products. That anyway. So that's something just to be aware of that this can help you in your journey. Um, somebody had questions about GERD. And so, um, you know, thinking about what oils to use, Zendocrine capsules are, are good for that lemon, digestion, ginger. Um, because when, you're, when you have GERD, oftentimes some of the supplements when you're doing the cleanse can kind of disrupt that, right? Things are starting to get going. And so just know that if you need to use digestion, the soft shell is really good for it. Um, ginger is another good one the lemon in your water being consistent with that. What happens with the oils, especially lemon, is it helps to increase the production of the mucus that protects the lining of your stomach. So you have stomach acid in there that is meant to be very acidic to break down foods. Like if you put in like metal down in your stomach, it would like corrode it, right? It's, it's that acidic to be able to break down these foods so that we can, can, can get the nutrients out of them. There's a mucus lining that, that lines the, the gut to keep it, or the stomach to keep it safe from that. And so oftentimes when you have digestive issues, there's been um, harm done to that lining, sometimes from antibiotics, sometimes from the food, sometimes caffeine, stress, those things can um, hurt that stomach lining. Lemon essential oil has found to, to help increase the production of that protection. So that's another reason why lemon in our water is also good. Not just so you drink more water and you're hydrated so the oils work better, but it's helping to support good gut health. So hopefully that's helpful. And also digest tabs is another good one. Um, it's kind of like your 
oh, Tums, but it's digesting. You have like the yucky stuff that Tums have in it, but it does still taste a little chalky. So just know that that's another option if you're having um, digestive issues. And then with that, the foods that you want to avoid are the bad fats that I just mentioned. Um, acidic fruits, so that would be your citrus fruits or tomatoes, um, chocolate, caffeine, spicy foods. And then the ones that are helpful and supportive to your stomach and your gut are like whole food, plant-based type diet, um, whole grains, green vegetables, especially berries. If you're going to be eating fruits, cause they don't have as much acid, um, as citrus avocados are phenomenal. Um, and that's another great oil, um, along, you know, adding good oils, coconut oil again. Um, and also try to, if you're going to, I wouldn't drink juices. Juices are really bad for, for that in that aspect. If you're going to, like a smoothie would be better than a juice because you want that fiber content within as you're eating. So that's on the GERD. Um, I think if there's any other questions. Will you be posting that as well? Yeah, so I'll post the, the replay and then I'm gonna post your thing on for diabetes. Um, let me see. So one of the challenges that somebody was having was including exercise and healthy cooking. <laughs> I know, right? Let's do it all. I can't remember who had that question, but maybe I'm going to throw it out there to you as far as we might do another training on planning because planning is so key to success and being able to create that. And I see Jennifer, you came and did it, Sherry. Um, welcome on. If you have any um, like suggestions as far as how can you plan in your exercise and healthy cooking, or kind of creating balance in life, uh, what's maybe working for you to give out some tips, guys? I have an idea for planning and cooking. Um, okay. If you really just have the ingredients for healthy stuff in your refrigerator and in your cupboard, then if you don't have the meal actually planned and you're just grabbing stuff, it'll be at your fingertips, basically. You know what I mean? It'll be right there and you can make it. You know, not saying you won't run out to fast food, but I'm thinking, you know, if you just do the, well, I'm just gonna grab something to eat, you'll have something healthy already. You don't have the other stuff there. Yeah, and it's more likely you're gonna do that, right? If, you, if yeah. that's what you have on hand. Um, and if you haven't checked out, there's a healthy in the, some of you wanted the Nutrition 201. In there, there's a list of healthy snacks. And so those are things that you could have on hand to help make that easier. Um, I know for myself, I had to pick a day to plan because with having eight people in our family, just making sure we had enough food in the house with all their teenagers, friends coming up, literally, like we have <laughs> huge food bill that it was like the planning of, here's at least three meals that I fix and I always make more so that if kids come home that they can have that for leftover. I have that for leftover. But I did, I had to pick up I plan the meals and then also when I grocery shop and I do a lot of ordering online now, so that's good. But that's been helpful, helpful. Um, and I do use the plan to eat app. If you haven't looked at that, you can get a 30 day free trial where you, like if you found a recipe online, you can, it will just grab it right into your thing and then you can plan out your meals for it. Just, just select the meals that you want and it will tell you what you need for your grocery list and you can go and mark off the ones you already have. And then, so you have your grocery list there and right there you have the recipe. It's really easy, super easy to um, So I, I love that. That's made it really easy as far as cutting down the planning time. Um, and I do want to mention that I think it's next week that we're focusing on exercise and Leona and Brandy have done some great videos and there's some helpful tips in there for how to exercise. So know that's coming up. Any other thoughts on that? Um, I like the time blocking. I think it's really important that you time block your scheduling for the week. So putting in, you know, your self-care time, when you're going to work out and then when you're going to meal prep. And in our household, because there's multiple diets going on, for me, it was just easier to say, what five types of meat or whatever is needed to be cooked that week? What vegetables can I prep? And what side dish is going to go for the kids? Because they can eat, like they can have more of the grains where I can't, things like that. So to not limit their dietary needs, we just 
prep those individual items, put them in containers, they're in the fridge. And then when it's time to, to make the meal, it's literally pull out the items that are pre-done, warm the meal up, and we're done. And yeah. that has been saving grace this week especially because I've got a lot on my plate and I was suffering from some inner ear stuff. And my husband is not a cook, but he was able to come down and just warm up the sauce. Here's the meat. Warm up some bread for the kids and boil up. They had spaghetti. Literally less than five minutes. He yeah. didn't order pizza. So that, <laughs> that I think is way helpful. <laughs> yeah. <There you> go. <laughs> if I cook up some, just a few healthy grains. So I'll have some cooked quinoa and I'll have some um, cooked rice, brown rice. And then I have different vegetable options, sausage op options, sauce options. Then I can just go in there, grab a scoop of this, add some vegetables, add some sauce or whatever. And get some direct yeah so but it does it does take that planning to do it okay another oh i want to one over there are a couple of other concerns that might be helpful to go through um so many uh, there were quite a few people who started the challenge who had the concern of sticking with it so I want to throw that out to you as far as how, like what kind of advice or suggestions can you give to somebody that is feeling like struggle with sticking with the cleanse or the changes that they're trying to do? What has been helpful for you? Daily self care. You have got to get up and put yourself first because if you don't, it gets overwhelming you get stuff on your plate and you're the last one to care for. But it's so true. If you don't do it, you won't stick with it. So you've got to get up and for, do the routine and provide yourself with daily self care because you're doing it to fill your cup, to be able to give to others, to be able to handle your family, to be able to handle your job, your coworkers, your husband, your wife, other relationships. If you don't do it for you, you cannot do it for them. It's it's huge, huge mindset change. But before the process started, that's what I had to do. I had to remind myself that it was okay to be selfish and take the time and do it for myself because we kind of get guilty sometimes, you know, when there's lots of stuff for us to do, especially those uh, stay-at-home moms or um, single parents or they just, they feel guilty. They should devote their time to all these other external situations. But if you're not taking care of you, you cannot take care of them. So sticking with your cleanse, taking your supplements is taking care of you first. And that's hugely important. And so I just get up in the morning and have a little sticky note on my mirror. It's take care of you first. First thing I see in the morning, and it's just my little reminder, hey, it's okay. It gives me permission to stay on the course and take care of myself. Awesome. Since that's all you got to do is just grant yourself permission to do it. Thank you. That's a, that's a good tip. And I like the sticky note thing. Um, I was going to ask Leona because if you guys don't know Leona, uh, she, yes, I'm pulling out Leona. So Leona's like this world class class Spartan racer. So she's obviously had to, had to figure out how to like maintain certain activity level over a period of time to be successful. So kind of putting you on the spot, but I would love one or two takeaways, something that's been helpful for you. Um, you know, maybe when you've had, you know, you're trying to create a result, right? Um, I didn't want you to pick on me. Yes, Leona. <laughs> no, um, I think just after, so the first little while it is hard. I mean, you know, you're kind of like forcing yourself to do it. You force yourself to do it. And then um, if you've ever read the book called, can you hear me? I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, if you've ever read the book called the power of habit, it's, it's incredible because your brain actually, after you do something in an extended period of time, that's consistent in like 62 days or something is the, is like what they say. Um, but it actually forms like a little track in your brain. 
and and our habits are really what make us who we are so i think after it becomes a habit then it's it's become it's like become so much easier but those first that first little while just making yourself do it you've got to know that it's going to get easier so you're going to do it today and it's going to get easier. I don't know if that helps. No, that does. And it, I think like for an example of that, I remember training for a triathlon and it was like four months of training. And the first part, it was like, it was hard because I wasn't used to doing like going and doing these certain things, but it was easier also because my husband was doing it. So he's kind of like my accountability partner. So it was easy to do it with someone, but then it all of a sudden shifted to where like I'm at Disneyland and I got to get my workout in like, I wanted to do it. It wasn't like, oh, excuse, you know, I'm on vacation. And I think like what you're saying that it had created new um, synapses or whatever within your brain that it was just like this habit, like you got to get this in where it's easy, where, but then, okay. So why I was saying that is that now that I'm training for this marathon, I'm not in the habit. Right. But I know that if I keep going, it will get to a place where it's easy, where getting up at five 30 in the morning is easy. And I look at my husband because he's been doing CrossFit at five in the morning, every morning, he gets up at four 30 and he just, whoop, just pops up. So it's like the hope that I'm going to get there kind of helps me to keep going every day. So I, yeah. So I see what you're saying. I like that you bring up habits. Anyone else, something that's helped them, you know, to keep going, even though they don't know they can do it. I'm not sure. I think I'm the older one. So, so you have like all this wisdom, share it with us. <laughs> If there's anybody else who can use what I'm saying because you're all in the middle in the middle of your life with children and stuff and I'm out of that right now and uh, what well, always will be now <laughs> <laughs> that, that ship has sailed <laughs> anyway um, what I find helpful for an older person who now has time and but didn't I didn't have that time when I was raising my family it's a challenge not to put too much on my plate because I now have an opportunity and time to do a lot of things, you know, explore things that I didn't have before. So I, I find that if I get too excited and I start to add more and more on, then I get overtired. And pretty soon I'm grabbing it and I'm like, oh, I'll just stop at McDonald's. I'm hungry and I just feel whipped. You know, so time for myself, it's like, I think, I can't remember who was saying it again, Audrey, about prioritizing and putting yourself first. I think I have to do that. I have to prioritize the activities that I'm doing and make sure that the, the ones that I really think are important in my life or in the life of others, maybe I'm serving someone, that takes the place of anything else that day. And don't add a whole lot more to it because I'm getting less energy. You know, as I get older, there's less. And I have to, you know, fine tune my activity level. But yeah. it, it works if I do that. I love that you brought that up because. That sometimes the problem with success is that we're trying to do to do too much, right? Mm -hmm. And that can be the same thing with this cleanse. And that's why we recommend people, if this is your first time, yeah. don't worry mm -hmm. about doing exercise. Don't worry about changing nutrition. Like, don't worry about some of these things. You know, take the products, just get used to that, creating that type of habit, or add water, right? There's something that I'm just drinking more water. That's my one thing. And so if you did watch the planning, kind of setting your goals, is that if your goal was, for instance, to lose weight, that's just an easy one to think about. What would be the one thing that you could add today that would help you get there? If you continued with that and made that a habit, if, you know, if you're starting with water, that's fantastic. And once that becomes a habit, like Leona is saying, that mm -hmm. it becomes easy, then we can add on that next thing. What's the next thing? And that might be exercise. It might be just changing. I'm just cutting Kool-Aid out of my diet, whatever it is. Right. And then once that becomes a habit, then you can, it's like that compound interest. Like I'm compounding these habits on top of each other to get phenomenal results. And so I, I appreciate that you bring that up that we don't have to do it all at once. Okay. All right. Your own, your own destruction, you know? Oh, for sure. And then you fall back. Cause when you're under stress, that's what I've been studying. When you're under stress, you fall back into old habits. So if you haven't created that as a new habit yet, you will fall back into, oh, well, I drink coffee or caffeine or whatever. I drink my sugary da 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 um, instead of water. When you're under stress, you fall back into old habits. And then you're just and you think you're a failure and you think, yeah. oh, oh, there's well. There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> I can't do this, right? Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to try something new again because you mm -hmm. have that belief that I, I might not be successful. And so that kind of goes back to those um, pitfalls that I was talking about. 
that, you know, evaluate yourself on those. And if you're doing something in this cleanse and you set it as a goal, I'm, I'm going to add water and you fell today to do it. It's okay to go back and evaluate and say, well, why did I fail? Well, I didn't take water with me or I didn't have the app. I should get the app or, you know, what was it that, that made it so it was hard for you and then start over again. Okay. Now I'm going to try this and, and do it. So, um, I'm trying to see, we have, I want to add on to that for just a quick second. In, in the past, I, I always struggled with coffee because, um, if I, if I got stressed out, if there was a lot on my plate, I would need like to boost energy and coffee is everywhere. You can go anywhere and get your coffee, mm -hmm. but coffee was not okay for me. It, it really just wasn't. And I would quit it, do really good for a period of time and turn around and go right back and quit it and just this cycle mm -hmm. and it's almost like every time I cleanse I can give it up because I'm in this mode to cleanse but then when the cleanse is over it's like go right back to it mm -hmm. this time I had to sit back and go why emotionally am I doing this it's not just a physical thing anymore it's it, it was a connection to my mind and my lifestyle too why was I always going back to coffee and it comes down to Actually, I needed to nurture the relationship with my mom because she's far away and I'm very close with her. And coffee was our thing. That started when I was very, very young. It was like a treat thing. We could go get a frappuccino when I went to the orthodontist because my mom knew I was going to be in pain. So here's a cute little treat. And maybe that was a bad habit, but in my mind, it was connecting these memories to the happiness with my mom. So when I was missing her, I was connecting it, the stress with, with my mom, or she was here to help me out, and here I'm just gonna have a cup of coffee because that makes me feel happy. And it, and, and it just compiled further than that. So I had to actually look and address the emotional side of the habit too, right. so that I could be more successful in giving it up. And once we got past the detox, I, I just would tell myself, why did you go through this? Mm -hmm. You have a headache for a week and you're miserable, and then you turn around and go right back to it. you know. Four weeks from now why are you doing that well it's because i actually was needing to nurture something else deeper and so that that one was a big one for me um that's awesome that you bring that up um i think it, that kind of goes back to you know doing the circle of life assessment um seeing you know are there places that are out of balance in our lives that might be causing us to self-sabotage or we're replacing it with something else with food or sometimes it's like sitting in front of the TV, right? Vegetating <laughs> because you're trying to feel something that you're missing. And if we can just have that awareness that this is what I'm doing, it's, you can't break that until you have an awareness. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, any other, I th think we're going to call it good unless anybody else had any last minute thoughts or questions. Okay. Awesome. Well, good luck with the rest of the, this first segment of the cleanse. Um, I would love to hear like how it's going. If you have questions just as we're going along, just know the Facebook group is there and whoever, you know, like upline oil person, if you have questions, they're always there to help support you. Um, but thank you for jumping on. Thank you for all your insights, feedback, and we are doing a giveaway to those who are online. Choo! Sorry. I always forget. I was going to write a note. Okay. So how many's on? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Six. I'm not going to add you, Elise. Sorry. Let me go to random.org. Random. Anybody on live right now? Nope. Random.org. Put in my number and I'll have to run over and show you what I have. <laughs> okay. It's number five. So I have to just count across my board. Let me see where you are now. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Sherry, you're the winner. I'm unmuting you, Sherry. Can I unmute you or can I not unmute you? She won't let me unmute you. I want to see. You can unmute me. Hey, you're <laughs> Welcome, Sherry. Nope. You don't even know what you want yet. <laughs> and you, he can talk all he wants. Let me grab it. <laughs> <laughs> so this you won this you're gonna make me regret unmuting <laughs> i love this so it's a little oil storage bag i don't know if i have one but 
Uh, this is mine. I have like little purple ones. And I just, yeah. I just you know, just has my oils in it, goes wherever I go. So you won that for coming on live. Congratulations. I will send thank you. Fill out so we can send that at the end of the cleanse. And thank you everybody for popping on. Appreciate your input. Thank you.